Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. Let's take a few minutes this morning to be the church together. I'm taking some time in this fall season to read through Paul's letter to the Philippians, and I'd like to share some of my meditations with you. Today we arrive at the final chapter of this book. Paul has just offered a deeply personal testimony, perhaps his most personal testimony. All his accomplishments, all his achievements, all the glory of the world are nothing in comparison to Christ. And so Paul writes longingly, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Of course, Paul already knows Christ in an earthly, this-world sense, but Paul continues to reach forward toward a fuller and deeper experience of Jesus Christ. With this in mind, today's passage is Philippians chapter 3, verse 17, through chapter 4, verse 9. I have excluded verses 2 and 3 for the sake of continuity in the reading. Paul writes, Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me, and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation so that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Here ends the reading. Paul now takes his personal testimony and draws out the meaning of it for his fellow Christians. There are people who oppose the message of Christ. Paul says, I tell you this even with tears. There is no self-righteousness in him. It is only a way of reaching a new point. Our citizenship is in heaven. Do not lean on your Roman citizenship or your Greek heritage or your Jewish customs. These things are not of ultimate importance, and they can be distractions from the point. And so, because Paul keeps this ultimate goal before their eyes, he can say, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Rejoice, says the man in prison. Do not worry about anything, says the man potentially awaiting execution. Pray. Give thanks. Hold fast to the good. And finally, Paul says, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This is certainly a peace which passes human understanding. One final note. 
see how Paul speaks about the peace of God. This peace will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It isn't necessarily that it will fill your hearts and minds. It will guard them. Because it's not something you have to hold. It's something that holds you. That is why we are free to rejoice over Christ Jesus in all circumstances. Let's close our time together with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.